Wow, it's been a while, huh? Yeah, this video is for the Zelda 25th anniversary documentary that Steve is putting together, which you can learn more about in the description below. A very late entry, so I apologize. Well, let's get straight into it. So for this video, I think I'm just going to talk about my first Zelda game and what I, what I thought made it work so well and why I think it's a special addition to the series and what it added, what it innovated. That game being Four Swords Adventures. Now the funny thing about Four Swords is that it's a lot like New Super Mario Bros. Wii in that it's a great game to play in the group if you want to lose friends, especially if you have some very competitive or mischievous friends. Honestly, it's not a competition. It's a collaboration. It's cooperation. That's what Four Swords brought and what Adventures made such a great use of in the multiplayer aspect. All the puzzles make great use of the fact that there are four links to control. There are more enemies on screen at a time. Uh, there are puzzles that incorporate the four link element. And the GPA connection allows the players t t the ability to explore when or however they want. Even though you can play the game alone, it was built specifically for a group. I think the biggest thing the game added is that, and this can be seen in uh, Skyward Sword too, is that the, the way the world is structured, every area in the game feels like a traditional Zelda dungeon, uh, the, the way that a dungeon would feel even though the area would normally be considered a town or a field or a, a cave or something like that, not really a dungeon. There are puzzles to solve and weapons and items to collect. And like the land below in Skyward Sword, every location has something to explore. Now it's clear that they did this to allow four players to work together without having to uh, go across an overworld before getting bored and switching to Mario Party. But this method of progression was more streamlined and made every location interesting rather than feeling like padding like uh, other overworlds in other games. In Skyward Sword, every area below the clouds has puzzles and, en and enemies and tons of things to find. Es essentially things you'd expect to find only in a dungeon. And I think that idea originated from the Four Swords games. If you were to take a ma the map of Four Swords Adventures and just put a sky hub on top of it, you would have the world map for Skyward Sword. If I had to give one complaint, besides the fact that each player needs a Game Boy Advance and a link cable, as, and, well, the human element, it'd be that the story is very light. Uh, there's not a lot of detail, it's a very basic plot, and essentially it goes over the same route that the original Four Swords and A Link to the Past already went through. So I guess this would be to make up for the fact that nobody really pays attention to the plot when everyone in the room is shouting at each other. And I guess if you really need a story, there's always the totally excellent Four Swords manga that you could read. In the end, Four Swords Adventures is a really fun game and a great addition to the franchise. If you can, find some competent friends and play it sometime.